Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the final part of the chess game tutorial. So, um, we're pretty much done with the whole movement stuff of all our pieces, except some special moves, such as the promotion, the unpassa, and also where the king switch places with the rook. Um, and uh, yeah, so what, what I would like to do is actually complete these three moves, but first, let's add a chessboard, an actual piece of graphics that we have in our folder. Um, because right now we pretty much have no visual if we turn off the gizmo. So I'm gonna go back inside of my artwork folder. I have a chessboard here, and here it is. Let me just put it in the scene so we can have a look. Now, obviously, this one is not going to be big enough, as you can tell. We'll have to do some resizing, and uh, I've did that before starting the video. The actual perfect size is a little bit weird. You have to go on the chessboard, then modify the scale factor for. 14.25 in case you're using the same asset as me. Um, as, if you're making your own asset, just make sure that all your tiles are one by one. And uh, that's actually what I need for my tiles to be one by one. So I'll be putting it under my chessboard object. I will be calling it just board. And uh, let's move it somewhere where it makes sense. So if we go back here, is that fine? I think it is. Let's press uh, play, and yeah, it looks it looks perfect actually. So let me just go put a texture on that. I think we have a texture as well. If we go under material, chessboard, um, there's a material here. I just have to create it. So albedo. We're gonna be using this, and we might as well use the normal map. Why not? Let's make sure we fix the normal map, and here we go. And as well, the occlusion was included. So here we are. Right. So um, what I'd like to do now, before we even do those moves, like I said before, what I'd like to do before that um, is create some kind of effect on the object we select. Because right now we select an object, we don't really get any feedback. We just we just know that we selected it because we're good at chess or something of the sort. But we, we don't really have any feedback. So let me just go ahead and... Um, Oh wait, never mind, we do have a feedback, but in order to see it, we'll, we're going to have to lower the board a little bit. This is the feedback we get, so these tiles, these white um, these white tiles that tells us we're allowed to go there. So what we're going to do is actually turn this into another material. We're going to be using a material that we give our object whenever we select it. And that material needs to assume the texture we currently have. So say we're targeting the pound over here. We are going to go fetch his texture that he currently has right now on his material that he currently has right now. Then, uh, so we're going to add the outline to this. Or sorry, we're going to replace that material, then put the, the old texture we had on that new material, then apply it to the object. And once we move that object, we just uh, we make sure that we put the, the last material we had so that sounds a little bit complicated, I know it is, so let's go ahead and open up the board manager. We're gonna do it instead, it's going to be fairly more simple if we just code it. Alright, so somewhere up here, just pretty much wherever you'd like, I am going to declare two new materials. So the first one is going to be private, we're gonna call it private material previous mat. And the next one is going to be a public one, so public material selected mat. Okay, next step I'm going to go down to the selected chessman or I mean select chessman function and uh, right about here we actually get our selection and that's pretty much where we should have um, our code running so if we have at least one move that means we select it and then after selecting it what I'd like to do is actually say previous mat is going to equal selected chessman um, get component we're gonna get the mesh renderer component and then from the mesh renderer we're gonna go get the material like so now um, once we have that we are going to go ahead and just modify our uh, selected mat so we're gonna say selected mat dot main texture is equal to previous mat dot main texture and then finally, selected man, I mean selected mat dot, um, oh, 
Never mind that, I, I messed up. Um, we're gonna say select the chessman dot get component, then we're gonna go get the mesh renderer once more. We could be storing it in a uh, temporary field, but I don't really think it matters too much at this point. Then material, and we're gonna replace that material by selected mat. Okay. So pretty much what we did is uh, we made sure that we selected something. Once we had something selected, we um, we stored his current material into a field right here, previous map, that we don't touch. We don't really want to touch that ever. That's um, our base material. That That's when they go back to default. We're not allowed to touch that. But what we did touch, though, we modified our selected map. We put the texture uh, there was on the previous map. And then we applied that new material on the um, chess piece. So let's go check out in the game what it's going to give us. We're not going to return back to the old material just yet. But say we click it, we get a error, and that's because we don't have a material just yet, which is true. So let's go under artwork, material, create, and let's create a selected chessman material. Okay, so I'm just going to drag, uh, say, a black bishop in here, and we're going to put the selected material on him. So what kind of effect could we give our our object we could be just I really feel like putting an outline around it but for that would need another shader so um, I'm just going to do it with a really easy one so let's say unlit we're gonna make sure that it's unlit so unlit texture and then after that once this is done I will go to um, I will go import some tune shading texture and I'll be putting that on this object instead and we're going to try out with this, and after that I'll go import some tune shading texture. So let's make sure our material is like this, and then we're going to remove those two. And let's go under the chessboard. If we expand board manager, as you can see here, there is the um, selected mat field. And now let me just find my project folder once more. It is. I'm going to drag and drop my selected material in this field so we have it under artwork and then material select the chessman and um, I'm just gonna put a space there okay so select the chessman under this field good if we hit play on this and have a look when I click on my object it actually assumes the um, the texture it had and then it changes that texture on the material which is exactly what we want but then uh, we have this error where we never actually go back to the previous texture so what we're gonna do is we are going to go in our move chessman function which is just here just below that and at the very end we're gonna say selected chessman dot get component again we're getting the mesh renderer dot material is equal to previous math. Okay. Now if we were to hit play, as you can tell, we now go back and we have this uh, little effect around our pound when we play it. Okay, so um, I'm quickly going to go under, what is it, assets, import package, we're going to import some effects. Those one are free, so you don't you don't need to actually pay for them, and it's not for Unity Pro; it's for Unity uh, Standard as well. So under Effects, I will grab. Gotta find it first. Tune shading. I'm only grabbing tune shading, nothing else. So import, and now I should have a new folder right here: Standard Assets, Effects, Tune Shading. And under that, we do get some new shaders, and we also get some new material okay but we're not really interested in the materials we're really interested into the shaders because we already have our own material and talking about him let's go open it up so select the selected chessman material we're gonna go up here under shader then go under tune and uh, let's do a basic outline now if we bring another uh, piece to the board just to test it out let's lower it appropriately like this okay now I'm going to drag and drop this shader 
and that's the kind of result we would get uh, assuming it had the good texture so what that's is that's the king so let's go find the king where is the king at well we can also play with the outline width so if we take a look in our game scene instead that's going to look like that which is really not too bad so I actually like this what I'll do now is um, I'll just remove that put it back on none and adjust the width like I would wish maybe like this so 0 0.005 and then we can remove it and the material has been saved here we go okay so now we get this kind of result which doesn't look too bad and I, I actually like it so um, we've got some selection going on now we actually see what's going on on our board when we select something that's very good okay so let's go ahead and code our additional moves so what we'd like to do now is um, have the unpassa working so basically the way this move works is uh, you need a pound say around here and you need this pound um, usually he's only allowed to go one move like this and then this pound would be able to eat him but what the end passant does is whenever you play this and you go two step in front like like so this pound is actually allowed to aid it during that turn so the turn after that it would be it would be able to go in diagonal and actually remove this one so that's pretty much how it works it's kind of complicated to explain like that so again we will just go ahead and encode it let's go under um let's go under board manager so under board manager what I'd like to do is uh, since we only have one turn to, to to do that move you can't simply just go like two step forward and then wait one turn and then eat that piece you have you have to do it exactly when uh, the other person does that move does two steps forwards so let's go up here in the board manager and we will create a uh, private int array of two uh, we won't set the size just yet and let's just call it un passant move and we will be not instantiated just now let's go in the start and actually instantiate um, or maybe under the panel chessman instantiate to a new int 2 which is simply going to be a position on the board uh, when we're allowed to do it so what we'll do is actually set this public so let's go ahead and go up here make this a public int and uh, maybe even a set get so let's go ahead and just make this accessible for our pound and I'll just put a capital okay and then I gotta go change it back sorry about that I keep changing my mind there we go Okay, so we're going to go down to the move chessman and actually start writing some really nasty stuff. Um, if the move is allowed, so we're inside the if allowed move. And down here we check, is there a piece? If so, let's capture it. Um, that's not something we need in this case because we're not, we know if there's a piece, we can't do the move. So that's not going to work. So we're going to go down there and we're going to say if um, selected chessman, the one we selected, the one that is moving right now dot get type is that allowed yes get type is equal equal to type of pound so if we're moving a pound then let's go inside of that and we're gonna check if um, selected chessman dot current y is equal equal to one and then we're gonna do an end statement so if we're on the, uh, the the pound line on the first move that, that of that pound and we are going and where it is it is over here and y is equal equal to 3 which is a four tile that means we did uh, a we did the the move where you go for two tiles for the white team at least now if that's the case if that is both equal that means um, we're going two steps forward so um, pass on move at the index one is going to equal X and let's just open this up and then I'll um, pass on move at the index Y I mean one is equal to Y like so 
and now we have our position. Oops. Okay, so that's only for the white team though. If we want to do it for the black team, let's just go ahead and copy this. Else if select the chess man, uh, current Y is at 6 and we're going to 4, which is the 5th tile. And that's the 7th tile. Then we're going to do plus our move is equal to that or that. Right. Um, what else do we need to do? Now that we have these information, we could actually check them inside of the pound script. But before that, let's just make sure that they're reset after the turn. So the way this works is we're going to go ahead and just... Um, if we do the move, let's go ahead and set that information. And then we're going to move our guy. Change his like the chess man. Do all that kind of good stuff. And then what else is going to happen? We're going to switch turn. So we pretty much need to keep this right here. And then um, that information needs to be reset just prior to that. The reason is we do this. We set the information and then the turn ends, but we need that information in the select chessman because that's where we get the allowed moves. So basically what we need to do is just go up here and say on en passant move at the index zero is equal to, um, we could be setting, let's set it to a minus one so we don't get any weird error. And then en passant move at the index one is also equal to minus one. So just to make sure that we don't get any weird move on the first one, let's let's go to where we declare this, which is I believe in spawn our chessman, and we're gonna say new int of size two, and then open the curly brace and say minus one, comma minus one. So we declare our array right there. Okay. So do we have any errors? We don't. Doesn't seem like we have any errors. Let's go ahead and go inside of the pound script. So we're going to open up our pound and have a look at what we're allowed to do now. All right, so now inside of our pound script, all we have to do is go up here in the diagonal left and we're going to do we're going to get our information first. So board manager .instance and pass on move. And then let's just say um we have this array right here. I'm going to put it inside a temporary array so I can actually play with it a little bit. Uh, let's just name it E, I guess. I'll pass on move. So now we get a reference to that. We're going to do if E at the index 0 is equal equal to current X minus 1 in this case. And E at the index 1 is equal equal to current y plus 1. So if that's the case, that means we have a en passant move allowed here and we can actually just say, uh, we, I, we can actually conclude this by saying r at this index is now equal to true and then we can also return out of this. Or I mean not return but break. So we don't need to test the other conditions. Oh, not before that, after that, like so. Okay. Right, so, um, well, you know what, just in fact, I'm not going to be putting the break, I'm simply going to leave it like that. And uh, we just need to copy this over to every single diagonal we get, so diagonal right, and all we have to change really is, um, well, first, we could be putting this in a temporary array up top, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Like so. Sorry about reformatting my code, but I was just, uh, I was making it, it was just a little bit too uh, messed up. So, we only need these two lines, we're going to be putting them pretty much everywhere in our diagonal. So, if E at index 0 is equal to current X, in this case, that's still minus 1 because we're going uh, diagonal, I mean, no, that's, uh, that's plus 1 because we're going diagonal right this time. We could actually just copy this over, by the way. So, I'm going to do that right here is equal to current x plus 1 and um, we're still going up so is equal to current y plus 1 that works now let's move over to the block team over here so we're going left that means current x needs to go minus 1 and we're going uh, we're the block team so we're going down on the chessboard so current y minus 1 same thing here minus and minus 
So the same information we have here. Let's copy this for one last time. Paste it in here, so current x plus one in this case. Both places, like this. And now we should have this move working, hopefully. If we just try and play it. Oh, I did it too fast. Well, okay, so now I'm going to move this guy over here and we should be allowed to go there and we are not. So let's go figure out why. Okay, so small mistake on my part here. Um, when I do this move, say I just went from here to there, uh, I went ahead and I debug what was inside of my en passant. So it was uh, 2 in X and 3 in Y. So that's 0, 1, 2, that's fine in X. 0, 1, 2, 3 in Y, that's not fine. We should not get the piece uh, where, where the piece is actually landing. We should get where the piece um, pass. So that is this over here, that would be 2, 2 in this case. So to fix that, we gotta go back inside of our board manager. So over here we say, if selected chess man is equal to type of pound, then um, we check, okay, is this your first move? If it is, just go set and pass on to your um, selection. But that's not what we want. We'd like to set it one step prior to that. So it's always on the Y axis. So what I'll do is simply put minus one. That's for the white team. And as for the black team, just do plus one. Okay, now we should get something that works. Let me just go check real quick. I should get 2 2 down in the console. And there we go. And now, as far as the move goes, let's see if it is working. And as you can see, I can now go over here, but I don't actually destroy a piece, so that's the next step. We actually have to destroy something. Right, so if we do make that move, if we do manage to uh, land this move, so what we'll do is actually uh, do a hard check. We'll do if um, to, to x, which is where you're supposed to go, is equal equal to on pass on move, and you gotta do it before you reset it, of course. Oops, on pass on move at the index zero, and y is equal equal to on pass on move at the index y. That means you actually did the move, right? That's that means you're actually going. Um, to that position, you're only allowed to go when you have the enhance and condition. Now, if y is equal equal to six, I believe is it six? Yes, that's six. That means we're on the white team and we're capturing a black piece. So uh, we're gonna open up the brackets for this one, and then we're gonna do else because there's no other way to actually go in there. That is the same exact thing as saying, uh, is it the white turn or is it the black turn? But we're just making sure using these values. So that would be a white turn and that would be a black turn. Now if we do manage to do that move and we're on the white team, we have the current position of our own piece. Now if it's the white, we just gotta look for the piece behind us and if it's the black then we just gotta look for the piece in front of us when we're looking at the board. So what we're gonna do is actually just take uh, this and we're gonna say chessman c without the chessman we're just going to say c is equal to chessman at the index x and then if we are the white team we're going to do minus one because we're going down on the board else uh, c is equal to y plus one now we have the pieces what we can do is actually just copy this code we got over here and destroy those two like so and we should actually get something working now. Uh, since we have code that is pretty much repetitive, we could actually take it, take it out like so, and actually leave the else if on single lines like this. Okay, let's go test it out, see if everything works. Hopefully nothing has broke our game just yet. So uh, we're gonna do that move should be able to go diagonal left, right, and it should delete this piece. And no, because we broke something. So let's have a look. Oh, sorry, here I said I'll pass a move at the... <laughs> um, okay, no, we can't do that. We're gonna say at the index one, not the index uh, y. Just a small typo because I'm getting a little bit tired. Sorry about that. Again, out of 
Um, no, no reference this time because chessman does not exist. Now, why is that? So, if y is equal equal to six, I believe it is my condition over here that is not working. So instead of saying if y is equal equal to six, I'll just say if uh, it is the white turn, that means we're moving a white piece. So basically, we need to look behind us. Okay, so let's try it out and see if everything works just fine. So I'm going to go here or actually this side. This is a black team, we get the selection, we actually get the piece behind us, so that's that's the move. Now let's try with the white team. And I also got the move. So that was allowed, that's very good. Okay, what else could we be trying? We pretty much already tried everything we could with this. Uh, I'm just going to make sure by testing another side. So right here. Okay, so the next move is actually called a promotion. So whenever you get one of your pound, all the way to uh, the end, so I'll just do it really quickly. Once you get your pound all the way to the end, you're actually allowed to promote him, and uh, this is going to cause him to become uh, a queen, basically, So, which is pretty much the best piece on the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here in board manager, and we're also going to check, okay, if selected chessman is of type pound. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say if y, which is the place we're going in the y, if y is equal equal, oops, sorry, is equal equal to 7, that means we made it all the way up on the board. So uh, as a white team, it's a good thing. And you, you can't ever go there as a pound if you're the black team because you're starting on tile 6. So if you make it there, then uh, you get to be a queen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, we could actually just instantiate the queen over there instead. So first off, we're going to destroy our own pound. So active chessman dot remove, and we're going to remove ourself. So ourself is the selected chessman at the moment, and we destroy that very selected chessman. Now what we need to do is actually instantiate another one. So we got the uh, spawn chessman function, which is right here, and we got to give it a index. So that's if we're on the white side. Um, if we're on the white side, we got to go use the index. I'm not sure. Let's go check. In spawn all, oh spawn all chessman. So we're spawning for the white team, and there it is. That's one. And for the black team, it is uh, seven. So if we go back to our move chessman function, uh, do, 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 where were we? Over here. So we spawn the uh, prefab one, and we spawn it at x and y like this. Now we do the exact same thing on the other side. But instead of doing spawn chessman 1xy, we do spawn chessman 7xy. So if, we'll do else if. So else, else if y is equal equal to 0, then we go ahead and remove this, uh, destroy the chessman, and then spawn at 7, like so. Now what we could also do is, uh, in order to just make sure that nothing is broken, we actually set that chessman back. So uh, I'll go ahead and down here I'll say selected chessman is equal to chessman's with an S at the index X and Y. Okay, so he makes it all the way over there. We didn't really destroy this piece and it didn't really lose its material. So we're going to go find a way to fix that. Okay, so it's pretty much the same error. So this is not a game object. This is a chessman type. So we're going to destroy the game object of that chessman. Okay, so we try once more now, and um, let's actually move forward. Eat this piece, why not? Then go there, go there. Then he becomes a queen. Okay, and we can keep on going, and this queen should work because our code is made in a certain way. And there we go. We now have another piece. Another queen, actually. And that's pretty much it for the promotion move. It wasn't really a complicated one. Now in promotion, in, in real chess, um, you can actually promote any pieces you want, except the pound, but 
But for this one, I really wanted to only choose a queen because first, that's what everybody does because it's the best piece. But um, also because I don't have any ways to choose which piece I'd like. I don't have a keyboard to input. Uh, I could have some buttons if I were to make them, but I'm doing this for mobile phones, so I don't really want to be putting any kind of UI in that tutorial just yet. But you know, usually you just put um, some buttons over there, and you say which which kind of piece you want to become. Do you want to become a knight, a queen, a rook, or a bishop? Because you can't be a queen, a king, and you can't be a pawn. All right, guys. So I'm going to end this. Quit. All right, guys. So I'm going to end it on this note because it's getting really long tutorial and I didn't really want it to be that long in the first place I only wanted to have three parts but turns out that chess is more complicated than I thought it was going to be and um, there's also another move that I didn't cover where the king can swap place with rook and uh, I don't really want to cover it just yet to be honest so what I'll do is just close this off and uh, if you guys need some help with this move I can go ahead and help you uh, personally but you know, it's it's you pretty much have to go inside of the king, then check is he on position zero or position seven, and then uh, is the is the rook over here, and is there nobody in between these two? If all those conditions are met, then you are allowed to swap both of these um under places basically. Okay, guys. So once more, I thank you a lot for watching. If you learned this or if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below, else use the Facebook page. And uh, thanks a lot for watching once more, and I'll be seeing you guys in future tutorials.